Okay. Um, I know you've heard me say, if you watch any of my dreams and videos, that I do not look at comments um, unless one is highlighted to me. For some reason, it comes up. <clears throat> and... Um, <clears throat> This morning, that's what happened. I noticed in a comment section of one of my videos that there was discord <clears throat> amongst the body and those that say they're part of the body of Christ. Um, <clears throat> and I noticed that this afternoon and all day the Holy Spirit has been leading me and working on me. And I never would do this unless led. <clears throat> um, so correction is of the Lord. Correction is love. It says he corrects his sons and daughters. <clears throat> he does not give condemnation. And I'm going to start by saying, as Christians, <clears throat> excuse me, I have allergies, and I hope this goes through because the storm we're about to have. <clears throat> As Christians, we have the right to have righteous anger um, and righteous judgment. It says, how can you not judge within your own body and your own church if you're expected to judge at the end of the world? <clears throat> That's in the Bible. It's not a judgment of pride, haughtiness, are leveling up. It is a correction and a judgment and hopes to bring those that are in darkness to light. And it's always done, sometimes with sternness and sometimes with tears, but always with the love of Christ. <clears throat> you save some with fire and brimstone fear, and some with love and compassion. And the Holy Spirit guides to that, and he knows who needs what. And we lean not onto our own understanding, but in every way seek the Lord. His ways are higher than our ways. That's all in the Bible, too. <clears throat> so first I'm going to address a comment that was made or comments. And then I'm going to address the body of Christ with love and edification. <clears throat> and I hope you listen. You're correct. <clears throat> In the Bible, it does say that women are to be silent. Okay. In one section. <clears throat> but to take that out of context and scare the body from the calling that they were given or to scare them from using the gifts of the Holy Spirit that was given to beat them with the Bible <clears throat> in a way it was not meant to 
correct is wrong. The context you're referring to is a city and a church that was established. And the people in it were still coming out of carnality that was in that city. <clears throat> and they didn't have order. And they didn't know how to walk in the Lord. And they needed boundaries for the Lord to move and to grow and to bring others to them. <clears throat> Boundaries were set up there because that city had none. Women were overstepping their right. And the men couldn't do what needed to happen. Neither could anyone function as the body of Christ. But everyone got a correction there and told how to be while they were growing, milk to meat, milk to meat, babes, babes growing. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit imparts gifts to everyone that's of the body of Christ. We're to use those gifts Everyone that says they're part of the body of Christ. That's following the Lord. <clears throat> the Bible also says that those gifts are to edify the church and to bring others to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a part in the Bible that Jesus talks about servants and giving them money. <clears throat> and one servant, he gave this much. Second servant, he gave this much. And the third servant, he gave one. And when he came back, the first servant had done things with it. And he said, good job. And he made him like the overseer of many more things. The second servant did as well. He increased, <clears throat> used his gifts, the money. And the master, when he came back, he praised him. The third servant was scared and hid his <clears throat> and then blamed it on the master and said, I knew you were a hard man and that if I messed up, you'd be mad at me. Didn't know the heart of God. Didn't know that God just wants you to follow him and try. A righteous man falls seven times but gets back up because he's still called righteous that's the blood of jesus the master said to that servant and to the other servants take his money and give it to the first servant I wish you'd rather done something with it and at least gotten the way I see it. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, okay? Um, I wish you had at least grown it somehow. Got, put it in the bank and got some interest on it. Let, let other people like use it, giving it to someone to bring people to me and souls to me, something. But you didn't, you hit it and no one came. So we took it away from the third servant. And he said, throw him into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth.
The body of Christ can't move without everyone. He calls it a body, not female, not male. We're the bride. The bride of Christ is men too, and women and children, because it's the church. We are the church. The body can't move without the toes. The body can't move without the eyes. The body can't talk without the tonsils and the tongue. We need all gifts and all people. We all have a function in the body of Christ that needs to be used to edify the church, to lift up, to grow, to help, to heal, to strengthen, to cry with them when they need us to cry, to laugh when they need us to laugh, to just sit and be there, to serve, to cast out, to heal, to walk, to see and talk, to understand. We're all part of the body. We all protect the body. You need everything. You need skin, muscles, bones, ligaments, the hairs in the nostrils. Everyone's a part of something. And all of it's important. There's one not least than the other. All of it has to function with each other or it messes up the whole body. The verse you're quoting, Acts 2, 17. Turn there. We're going to start with 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants and on my handmaidens i will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and i will shew wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Again, for those that are still drinking milk, Ezekiel fourteen twenty two. Yet behold, there shall be left in it a remnant who will be brought out, both sons and daughters. Surely they will come out to you, and you will see their ways and their doings. Then you will be comforted concerning the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, all that I have brought upon it. We also should know the verse about do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That's not gender specific. That's to the body. We're the ones that have the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I can't stand before the Lord my God at the judgment seat where we'll all stand. The Bema seat, the mercy seat for the believers and say, you gave me something and I couldn't use it because I was scared of you. I was scared because people were telling me I was a woman. That you wouldn't like that, even though your word does not say that I wanted to please man. The Bible says, don't please man, please God. God has called you. 
I won't stand before the Lord my God and be a wicked servant. I will try even if I'll fall flat on my face and I have the bloody knees to show for it. I will let him pick me back up, wipe me off and smile for trying. I stand there just as you will stand there and all of us will stand there as sinners that needed a savior that will have, praise God, the blood of Jesus on us. And that's what he'll see. My Bible says, Blessed are the feet that go to spread the gospel, the good news, and the word of Jesus Christ. Blessed are the feet that go. Not the man that goes. Not the woman. Not the elder. Not the preacher. Blessed are the feet that goes. He needs a willing vessel. He needs feet and hands and mouths. He needs the body to go. It's time. It's way too late. I can't stand there and make someone happy and say, God's not talking to me and lie. He talks to everyone. He's talking to five-year-old children. I can't stand there and see someone that's about to burn in hell forever. And I know that the Holy Spirit's telling me to go, go, go talk, go talk. I've tried to walk past before and he has pulled me back and stopped me in my tracks. He's physically hurt my body like in a pool until I turned around and went. He's saying, I need them. I'm working on their heart. I'm reaching them. You need to go talk. I can't walk in a way to please someone that doesn't understand. And know that someone will burn in hell for eternity. Because I thought I was a woman and I couldn't do it or should not do it. It's the same as saying, I'm walking on a nice day in my neighborhood. And I see a house on fire. I hear someone inside. I stand there. I stand there. They die. They're going to burn. Instead of running in and trying to help. I stand there. And someone asked me, why'd you stand there? Why didn't you call 911? Why didn't you run and try and get them out? You have a water hose in your hand. Why didn't you take the water hose and put them out? They were on fire. I can't. I don't know how to operate a water hose. That's not my legal job. I'm not a firefighter. I can't do that. Someone could sue me. I have to wait for the professional. I have to wait for the firefighter. But you had a water hose in your hand. They're rolling on the ground and fire. You have a blanket in your hand. Throw it over them. Shield them. Tell them to stop, drop, and roll. 
Tell them how to save themselves. Tell them they can be saved. Put the fire out. Put the fire out. They're dying. I can't do that. I have a covering that can save. I know the goodness of God. I have a water hose, the Holy Spirit, that wants to pour and outpour on others. He doesn't care who I am. He just wants obedience and love. Doesn't matter I'm a woman. Second commandment. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Neighbor. Did it say, man, go and love thy neighbor. Woman, go love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Everyone. The body. Love thy neighbor. Love. Love is saving. Love is talking. Love is correction. Love is going that extra mile. For someone. Jesus said, if they asked you to go one, go two. Go another mile with them. Love. Save them from themselves. We're all called to spread the Great Commission, the good news. And I'm not God. I didn't tell them how to create the earth. Where to tell the sun and the moon to stop or go. Tell the oceans to stop at the shores. I wasn't there when he created it. His ways should be my ways, but his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. It says he reveals and he reveals mysteries and he reserves some mysteries for himself. We prophesy in part. Everyone gets a little part. They come together as puzzle pieces. We still don't know the whole thing. Trust God. My God is alive. He moves. And he moves in me. So I move. Body of Christ. New. And those that have been for a while. Those that are seeking. Do not fight amongst yourselves. Those seeking to start discord and trample the pearls. Beware. Do not Use this platform that God has called to bring confusion. Those that are seeking to come to the Lord and trying to understand that they may walk away and not be found. Don't be a stumbling block. 
that they get lost forever. God says, be still and know that I am God. He handles these situations. He sees and he's watching. There's still young Christians that are out there seeking and, and needing to know and lost that are coming to listen and understand. Let's not beat up each other when we're doing God's work. The world does that enough in darkness. Don't hinder someone from coming to Jesus because they read something and they don't understand. And they look and say they fight amongst themselves. Hypocrite. There's a part where Paul says that he walks and he shows how to walk. Basically, he denies his flesh and he gets out of the world and he shows us the way it should be, but he shows how to walk. Why? So that when you go to someone that doesn't believe, they can't look at you and see or know anything that you've put out there and say, but... I saw you at the bar and here you are telling me not to do it. I saw you doing this and that, but you're telling me that I'm a sinner. If you're going to heaven, surely I'm going to heaven. I don't need Jesus. That's what they'll do. All because they don't understand. All things are lawful to me, but all things are not edifying. All things are not good. They still destroy. And they not only destroy you, they destroy the lost that are looking at you. Don't give the world a reason to say hypocrite. We're still sinners. We've got the blood of Jesus, praise God, and we're learning. But you've got God in you. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Greater is he that's in me than in he that is in the world. What was missed from those dreams that I hope y'all heard before reading comment sections. One, God's warning something is coming to a domed building. I'm not going to call what it is. Many people are probably going to get hurt and lost. But it's going to be a shakening. And he shakes so people come. But he knows. God's still in control. Two. The woman getting ready in my bathroom with the bangs was the body of Christ. It was the bride. The bride of the bridegroom. Over two years ago, maybe three almost, I was called to first start. God said very plainly and sternly in front of me, I told you to tell them to put on the full armor of God. Sound 
the alarm. I said, okay, I heard that. I got it. There was no missing it. It was very stern in my face and loud. Loving sternness. Sound the alarm. He's coming. Put on the full armor of God. Why? It's getting darker. We need to fight. We need to be able to battle. We need protection. In the dream, the bride was getting ready and my daughter and I were helping her to get dressed. That's what we've been trying to do along with my son for two, two and a half years now. Helping the bride of Christ to get dressed. Use the full armor of God. Be strengthened and protected. No falling away. Keep running the good race. Finish strong till the end. He's coming. Also, to tell others to put on the full armor of God, meaning salvation is for today. This is the day of your salvation. He is coming. Don't wait. Don't waste another breath. You may not have it. In the dream, God highlighted the bride's feet to my daughter. The feet were bare, bare feet. She did not have on the shoes. The bride, who's the bride? Those in Jesus Christ. The, the ones that believe in Jesus and follow Jesus are the bride. We don't have on the shoes. She then saw thousands of shoes falling from the sky. God's providing his bride shoes to put on. Put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. It's time to put on the shoes. What are the shoes? The gospel of peace. To walk and spread the gospel of peace. Salvation. It's time. He's providing shoes to the bride. Everyone needs to put them on. Everyone needs to open the mouth and spread the gospel of peace before it's too late and people are left behind. We know what's coming. What do you do when you get ready and you're about to go for a date or out? Like, like the dream, the bride was getting ready to go for a date to meet right? To meet her bridegroom. She's dressed. She's done her hair. She's put on the jewelry and the clothing. What's the last thing to put on normally? We're not going to nitpick. Some people leave them by the door so they can put them on when they step out. What's the last thing to put on? Before you walk out the door, you put on your shoes full armor of God. You put on your shoes. Jesus is coming. You're clothed. It's the last thing to put on the shoes before you walk out the door to meet your bridegroom for your date, the appointed date and time from the beginning of the earth. You put on your shoes before you walk out the door. 5784, I got that over a year ago, year and a half ago. 5784, I have it written by, I have Psalms 84 written on my mirror by my front door. And I didn't know why until I realized we're in the year of 5784. 5784, Psalms 84, read it. 5784 is the year of the door. He's at the door. We're at the door. 
We're putting on our shoes. Go spread the gospel. He's coming. He's coming quickly. There's not much time. Don't bicker amongst each other. Save the lost. Save the souls. Don't let them stay in that burning house. You've got the water hose. Jesus is the door. No one gets to the Father except through him. He's the only way to heaven. Jesus is the door. He says, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Body of Christ, bride of the bridegroom, put on your shoes. God's providing the shoes for you to put on. Put on the full armor of God. He's coming. 